The next day, Jo awoke with a resolute vow to work on her project. She could not lose sight of why she was in Granboro Park. Nicholas Blackstone was an unwelcome side effect to her true agenda, the coveted mentorship. She still had two and a half weeks to finish this project, and she would have been damned to let that time go to waste. She had excused herself early the previous evening to draft sketches for the house. That was the first step of this agenda. The Blackstones had some old furniture that could be incorporated into the public spaces, a few armchairs, a grandfather clock, and two grand bookcases. She had finished planning that yesterday. Today, she was to work on the bedrooms. Jo hoped for a few minutes alone with Nicholas to discuss the budget and his preferences for his bedroom and study. Doing this would not have been her first choice in this case. Staying alone with him was perilous, considering the peculiar feelings he stirred within her lately. However, as the man of the house, his approval was crucial for the upcoming decisions. Jo prepared herself for a strictly professional exchange, no drifting into memories of a certain dance or the accidental hand-holding incident in the workshop. Absolutely not. And she most definitely wouldn't dwell on the strange discomfort she felt by seeing him with Miss Violet. It was the peak of unprofessionalism. She was here to work, not pine. After finishing her breakfast, clad in her no-nonsense gray dress, a sartorial testament to her determination to keep things strictly professional, Joe approached Nicholas's study with the resolve of a general marching into battle. She had mentally rehearsed her rules. No more accidental touches, no getting lost in deep gazes, business only. Outside Nicholas's study, heart pounding with anticipation, she knocked three times. Come in. Joe entered, her steps measured. She had sent Nicholas a note the previous evening with the butler, politely declining dinner in favor of a solitary meal in her room and setting the time for this meeting. She spotted the note on his desk as she walked in, its presence there oddly reassuring. At least he'd read it. The study was snug, its walls lined with bookcases groaning under the weight of numerous volumes. Some she recognized, while others were completely foreign to her. Nicholas's desk sat amidst this chaos, a lone island in a sea of papers and books, suggesting that meticulous organization wasn't exactly his forte. Miss Metzger. Nicholas stood up as Joe entered, his movement fluid as he bowed. His attire was casual, yet impeccably tailored, with light trousers and a morning coat hinting at a recent return from the outdoors. Joe offered a curtsy, her eyes still roving around the room, taking in the sea of books. Good morning, Mr. Blackstone, she said. She was noting all the details of the space. The original hardwood floors were visible, lacking carpets. The wallpaper peeling at the seams appeared at least 30 years old. That would have to be remedied soon. You seem to already have strong opinions about this room, Nicholas remarked, leaning back against his desk with his arms crossed. The faintest hint of a smile tugged at the corners of his mouth, almost teasing. Oh, they were definitely not off to a good start. His smiles had an unexpected effect on her. There was no way to tell how this visit would turn out if this continued. Well, you have an impressive collection of books, Joe observed, her gaze finally meeting Nicholas's. True to form, he was watching her intently. I told Granboro Park had a separate library. It does, Nicholas nodded, but I prefer being surrounded by books. It seems my uncle shared the sentiment, given the abundance here. A passion for books is something we have in common then, Joe responded, her tone infused with genuine warmth. You're quite fortunate to have such a diverse collection. I've never had enough space for all the books I wish to obtain. He didn't respond directly, but diverted his gaze to his shoes and almost boyish shyness about him. Joe wondered if this softer side was a private aspect of himself concealed behind the door of his office. I wanted to discuss my plans for decorating your home. Joe quickly cleared her throat and decided that to keep herself to her rules, she had to stop being distracted from the task at hand. You've already talked with my father about the general finances, but I need to know your budget for each room's decor. Typically, discussing finances was a matter she would handle with the ladies of the household, room by room, after they had already come to an agreement with their husbands, of course. The idea of having this conversation with a man was not simply unusual, it was almost revolutionary. She braced herself, hoping Mr. Blackstone wouldn't be like most men in this regard. But... Then again, expecting a man to engage in such detailed discussions about home decor with a woman might have been a bit of a tall order. The sum I agreed on with Mr. Metzger was 200 pounds. That includes the drawing room. What's left for the bedrooms, I believe, is about 130 pounds. 
Nicholas said casually, as if discussing something mundane. Joe swallowed hard. Papa told her to let her imagination loose and not feel constricted, but that figure was leagues beyond what she had anticipated. She had been under the impression that the Blackstones were struggling financially, but now she saw he had a very different understanding of a financial struggle than Joe. She fought to maintain her composure, though internally she was doing a dance of astonishment and glee. Would that be sufficient? More than sufficient indeed, she said, her voice steady despite the dryness in her throat. She really would not have to hold back on her most ambitious designs. Her only constraint was the lack of time. You will have the highest quality of everything, I assure you. That's settled then. His casual note sealed the deal, and the momentary silence enveloped them, their gazes inadvertently intertwining. This more relaxed, almost approachable Nicholas was quite disarming. Do you have any particular ideas for your office? Joe ventured, her voice betraying a hint of vulnerability. She mentally kicked herself. Why did he have to have such a perplexing impact on her? She was here to discuss wallpapers, carpets, and the such, not unravel the mysteries of Nicholas Blackstone's character. I'm quite fond of it as it is, but I would still love to see it in a better shape, he said, his hand gliding over the wallpaper with an unexpected gentleness. Joe caught herself momentarily, entranced by the movement of his hand, her imagination running a tad too wild. She had to stop thinking about touching him. I would rather relocate most of my bedroom's budget to my office. Perhaps it could receive a carpet and new wallpaper. I remember looking through the catalog you provided at the upholstery. The memory of their hands touching in the workshop resurfaced, exactly what Joe had hoped to avoid. She couldn't help but feel he was intentionally reminding her of that moment. What an infuriating man. Did anything in the catalog catch your eye? Joe asked, her voice slightly strangled. The air seemed to thin with his proximity, a fact he appeared to notice as he halted his advance. Yes, he replied, his voice taking on a deeper tone that did absolutely nothing to help Joe's flustered state. I marked a few options. He retrieved the catalog from his jacket pocket and held it out to her with a slow, almost inviting move. Taking it, Joe felt mortified by the tremor in her hand. The paper was still warm from his touch and its proximity to his body. Would he be this one to snuggle against? Get a hold of yourself, woman, she chided herself, swallowing hard as she tore his gaze from him and stared at the floor instead. Miss Metzger, are you frightened of me? Nicholas inquired, his brows knitting together in a mix of concern and confusion as his hand retreated. No, of course not, she replied, mastering a semblance of confidence. Why would I be? She added, though her inner voice listed at least three solid reasons. However, Nicholas, seemingly unfazed by her response, stepped closer, his gaze scrutinizing her. This close, she could see the minute details of his face, the freckles, the depth of his irises. He was uncomfortably near, but a part of her longed for him to get even nearer. Her resolve to focus on business was rapidly deteriorating. You are trembling, he noted, his voice gentle. Would you like to sit? Joe averted her eyes, focusing on regaining control over her wayward voice. No, thank you, she responded, her gaze accidentally catching his before darting to the safety of his jacket. I'd rather discuss your bedroom. As the words tumbled out, Joe wished for the ground to open up and swallow her. The unintended double entendre painted her cheeks a shade of crimson that could rival the most vibrant wallpaper sample in the catalog she was clutching. Even from the corner of her eyes, she could see the surprise on Nicholas's face. My bedroom. Joe inwardly cringed. How could she continue for three more weeks after such a blunder? Decorating your bedroom, she corrected, forcing a strained smile. You said you would rather not spend money on it, but I think we can split your generous budget between your bedroom and your office with ease. Nicholas's broad grin indicated he was relishing her discomfort. It was at that moment Joe decided Nicholas Blackstone was a fiend in gentleman's clothing, her sworn adversary, not the object of any sort of affection. It was easier said than done, Joe had to admit to herself. I must say, Miss Metzger, you are quite charming when embarrassed, he remarked, turning back to his desk. Joe blushed anew, this time out of frustration and self-consciousness. She stood silently, her mind racing as Nicholas eased back into his chair with a casualness that belied the tension in the room. My bedroom is in quite good condition, actually. I spent such little time there that I think it is sufficient for now. Of course, he paused, his smile way more suggestive than it would be appropriate. You are welcome to see it.
yourself, if you wish. Jo felt as if her face might spontaneously combust. This had to stop. He was a gentleman, wasn't he? He engaged, no less. Yet here he was, throwing propriety to the wind with his flirtatious banter. And verse, why did every teasing word from him send her heart into a tizzy? My lord, I appreciate lighthearted jesting, but you are crossing a line, Joe said, striving to appear as stern as possible. Her not being able to look him in the eye must have severely undermined the seriousness of her words, though. She could not help it. Looking at him made it way too tempting to allow this flirtation to continue, and that was simply out of the question. I apologize, he replied immediately, his voice taking on a more serious tone. I spoke without considering the implications. It won't happen again. Thank you. Joe sighed and finally felt the blood slowly trickle back from her face to the rest of her body. She watched from under her lashes as he shuffled some papers around on his desk. Though I must admit, it's been a long time since I've conversed so openly with anyone, Nick added, his smile sincere and devoid of jest. And I'm not referring to the flirting, just the conversation. Joe paused for a second, trying to decide if he was jesting with her again. He seemed genuine, shedding the stern facade of Nicholas Blackstone for a more approachable demeanor. Simply Nicholas. You certainly seem more at ease, Joe observed, her shoulders relaxing slightly. I admit you are not the easiest person to read. You are far more affable in private. Are you flirting with me now, Miss Metzger? He quibbed, a smirk playing on his lips. Joe couldn't help but laugh at the suggestion. It was merely a compliment. His smirk softened into a gentle smile, though a veil of caution remained in his eyes. Perhaps he was wary of revealing too much of himself. Thank you, he finally said with a small nod. I find you quite affable myself. Joe blushed this time from a sense of warmth rather than embarrassment. Sensing the conversation drawing to a close, she curtsied swiftly. He nodded in acknowledgement, and she turned to leave the room, her heart racing. What effect was Nicholas Blackstone having on her?